Mr. Minister, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us today for the CSIS Banyan Tree Leadership Forum. My name is Charles Freeman. I'm pinch hitting for Ernie Bauer, who runs uh, uh, our Southeast Asia program and unfortunately couldn't be here today because he's in Jakarta, of all places, um, <laughs> hopefully working to implement some of the goals that uh, uh, for strengthening bilateral ties between the United States and Indonesia that I, I trust the minister will, will address in some part today. I'd also like to, uh, to welcome uh, the ambassador uh, from Indonesia, uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Dino Jalal, uh, this morning. Uh, he's recently arrived here in Washington, and I, I know he's going to be working very hard um, on what is increasingly an uh, a, a, a enormously important relationship between the United States and Indonesia. I'd also like to thank the other ambassadors who are here today for joining us, and thanks very much to Chevron and uh, uh, Diana Sedney uh, uh, for their support in making today's work possible. Uh, CSIS is deeply honored that, uh, that Indonesia's Minister for Foreign Affairs is addressing the Banyan Tree Leadership Forum today. Minister Marty Natalagawa is recognized as one of the most important young leaders of his country. In many ways, he's been the voice for Indonesia. President uh, Yud uh, Hoyono selected him as Foreign Minister last October, but before then, he was Indonesia's permanent representative to the United Nations, uh, Ambassador to the United Kingdom, and Chief of Staff and Spokesman to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His rise to the ranks of the ministry has been uh, meteoric, to say the least. Um, and he has earned the trust and respect of his colleagues in Indonesia, ASEAN, Asia, and globally. The minister's leadership has been well recognized in Indo as Indonesia is taking its rightful place on the world stage after its historic transition from autocracy to democracy over the last two decades. Indonesia is the incoming chair of ASEAN, a key member of APEC, and the East Asia Summit, and has recently been named member of the G20, which uh, um, is uh, entirely appropriate. Minister, Minister I, I know you'll be logging many miles to keep up all, all of the symmetry that this entails, and I know you're here in the United States in part to attend the second U.S. ASEAN Summit, which will be hosted by President Obama in New York next week. Given the exciting developments in Indonesia and regionally, we're all looking forward to the Minister's presentation. It's my honor to introduce Minister Marty Natalagawa Nat Nat this morning. Thank you. Mr. Charles Freeman, I'd like to thank you very much for that uh, most kind introduction. And especially I would like to thank all those who have made uh, possible uh, today's event, uh, giving me a forum to share some thoughts about Indonesia's perspective on its uh, place in the world and especially its relations with the United States. I wish also, like yourself, uh, Mr. Freeman, I uh, want to ac acknowledge the presence of my dear friend and colleague, Ambassador Dino Jal Jalal, who has just yesterday presented his credential. I, I, I can speak with the greatest of uh, conviction and confidence uh, that he is a person who will do tremendously in, in, uh, well in promoting Indonesia-US relations. And uh, Indonesia is truly uh, fortunate to have a representative of his caliber here in Washington. And, and welcome to Washington, Ambassador Dino. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very grateful that you find it worthwhile to be here with us this morning uh, to hopefully uh, absorb some of our thoughts, Indonesia's thoughts on uh, various international issues, as well as our thoughts on uh, bilateral relations between uh, Indonesia and the United States. I'm especially pleased to offer a modest contribution to a forum which is premised on recognition of the importance of building dialogue on a broad range of issues between Southeast Asia and the United States. I have come to Washington in pursuit of such a dialogue. I'm sure that more of, the more we know of one another and of one another's position on crucial issues, uh, the smoother and the more fruitful is our cooperation and the more robust is our friendship. Let me begin by sharing with this August Forum an Indonesian perspective of the most pervasive and striking realities of our uh, contemporary time. Uh, nations today must face the fact that we live in a globalized and networked world, and that this world is in the grip of formidable uh, challenges. Challenges that defy national solutions as they are transnational and global in nature, Challenges that are remarkably complex since they are intertwined in nature. As a result, the remedies that they demand are at once national, uh, regional, 
as well as uh, global. As well, solutions that are focused and specific on the one hand, yet comprehensive and broad on the other. Uh, not least in a network age, policymakers no longer has the luxury of paucity of time, a buffer between the occurrence of an event and a policy response. Challenges and crises demand real-time responses. And indeed, in contemporary world, it seems almost as if crises and challenges are the norm and a constant, and that normalcy is in fact the exception. Crisis that you are all too familiar with, the economic downturn from which we, are all, we all have barely recovered, the financial crisis that is still raging in some developed economies, the persistent food security and energy security crisis, the challenge of climate change, and a host of non-traditional threats to security that includes irregular migration, pandemics, international terrorism, and religious uh, intolerance. Of course, concurrently, the more traditional and perennial threats to international peace and security uh, remain. A world in deep crisis is a dangerous world. It imperils the weak and the poor, as well as the mighty and the rich. However, Excellencies, friends, I wish not to labor on threats and challenges alone. For I do earnestly believe that at the same time, these very challenges also offer opportunities. Above all, they provide incentives for a fresh perspective, uh, the imperative for change in the manner nations conduct themselves, certainly at the national level and indeed at the uh, global level as well. A premium for a problem-solving outlook of building bridges among divides and of partnership. The United States and Indonesia have been addressing this need for change, each in its own way and according to its unique situation and capabilities. It stands to reason that both will get better results and contribute more to the welfare of humankind if we work together. Our two countries have a long friendship that dates back to the time when, in the wake of the Second World War, the United States supported Indonesia's successful struggle for independence. Today, the United States and Indonesia are respectively the second and the third largest uh, democracies uh, in the world, which means that we are both totally committed to the same values and ideals, including those enshrined in the United Nations Charter. Thus, I do sincerely believe that the prospect for our bilateral relations are the best they have ever been today. It was in recognition of this fact that in November 2008, my President, His Excellency Dr. Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, speaking before the United States Indonesia Society, or USINDO, here in Washington, uh, D.C., proposed the idea of forging a comprehensive partnership uh, between our two uh, countries. This idea received uh, warm reception and positive response on the part of President Barack Obama and was also followed up when Secretary Clinton visited Indonesia in February of 2009 when she proclaimed uh, officially as well support for such comprehensive uh, partnership. Since then, on various occasions, Secretary Clinton and I have met to further uh, develop the idea. Indeed, a few hours from now, I'll be meeting her again in the first uh, joint commission meeting between our two governments, and we will announce the partnership's plan of action after uh, the meeting. But this much I can inform or tell you at this time. Uh, this partnership is based on key principles of mutual respect, common interests and shared benefits, and of course, not least, of equal partnership, and is also always forward-looking uh, in nature. It is a comprehensive partnership that covers a wide range of fields that are crucial to Indonesia's uh, development. They include education, health, science and te technology, food and energy security, national security, trade and investment, and sustainability of the environment. It has a strong sociocultural component, meaning people-to-people -people context. It is a people-centered relationship involving the kind of soft power that the world would like America to exercise more robustly. Thus, it addresses the fact that the number of Indonesians studying in the United States has declined 
from 14,000 a decade ago to around 7,000 7, today. Cooperation between our respective universities should help reverse this unfortunate uh, trend. The partnership will be enriched by the particip participation of a broad base of stakeholders, including legislators on both sides, our business sectors, our civil societies, academicians, mass media practitioners, community leaders, and uh, local officials.